I'm Tom Ahn, and I'm going to let you in on a secret just to start off. In this talk, you're going to learn absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. But hopefully, you'll walk out wanting to learn everything. So keep that at the back of your head for now. We'll get back to it. For now, let me tell you my story. For 17 years, I have spent my life being different. And I've seen things in a way that most people don't. Or rather in a way that they just can't. I share this difference with only about 4.5% of the world's population. And that difference is colorblindness. Now, colorblindness, it's a very it's a weird thing. It's led to a lot of, let's call them, scenarios when I was younger. I remember avoiding things like salads, like the plate, not because of things like the taste or the texture like most other kids, but because the red and green that sat on my plate looked like, you know, brown muddy lumps. And I remember walking around my kindergarten classroom, asking for somebody to help me find a red crayon in a bucket that they used to give us. So my friends would come over, pick it out quite easily, obviously. They give it to me. I go over and start coloring. And because I'm the most coordinated five year on this planet Earth, I drop it back in 20 seconds later. Rinse and repeat two years, that was my kindergarten. But this was also around the time when my teachers and my parents discovered that I was what the doctors call moderately neutronomalous, which is basically a fancy way of saying that I was red green colorblind. And they tried to explain to me what being colorblind was all about. They tried telling me that there were all these colors that I couldn't see. But let's face it, do you honestly think of five room you could understand that? Not really. It's like trying to imagine a color that doesn't exist. Actually, you know what? Let's try that. For a second, try to imagine a color that doesn't appear on a rainbow. Let's take a couple of seconds. Close your eyes if you have to. Okay, so let's say you have something in your head right now. Let's say there's this color which you're absolutely certain doesn't appear anywhere else. Well, I want you to think about how you would describe this color to somebody else using only your words. Well, it seems kind of impossible, doesn't it? That's exactly how it was, trying to explain to five-year-old me that red and green were distinct and not just the money mess of brown I had seen for years. But that all changed when I turned about 12. And my mother took me to this clinic that made lenses for the color deficient. So I went in, didn't expect much, honestly. But the moment I put my first pair of glasses on, everything changed. Suddenly, red and green were distinct. And not just the mess of brown that I was used to, Brass, colored pencils, fire trucks, and yes, crayons. They all looked the way they should. The way I couldn't see them before. It's been five years since that whole experience at the clinic. And I've been replaying that over and over and over again in my head. Which got me thinking. We found a solution for color blindness, which is great and all, don't get me wrong. But can we think bigger? Can we fix something that every single one of us in this room faces in one way or another? Let me introduce you something I like to call knowledge blindness. I believe that when we lack a certain type of knowledge, there is a perspective that we're blind to. And people can tell us that there's something lacking in our views, that there's something that we're not seeing. But until we discover it for ourselves, we remain blind. It is only through our own exposure and our own experience that we are able to develop what I like to call a lens. And this lens allows us to see the world from a more developed point of view, potentially even changing our entire worldview. So that's how I think it works, but what perspectives are out there? What more is there for us to see? 
Let's talk about history. Something which I've been very passionate about ever since I was a kid. I believe that history is characterized by its patterns, its trends, its chains of cause and effect. And I believe that this understanding is where we come, uh, where we, um, where, where the phrase emerges, history repeats itself. Now, I believe that with an understanding of this phrase, we're able to understand what history can provide for us as a perspective. For example, try to guess who I'm describing with this statement. Ambitious European leader attempts to invade Russia, forces defeated by harsh winter. Now, this probably sounds like something like, I don't know, Hitler, 1941, World War II. Well, what if I told you that Hitler's mistake had been made over a hundred years earlier, in the year 1812, by this little known figure known as Napoleon Bonaparte? Let's try another one. Then if I were to say head of state of one of the most influential nations of the era spreads fake news about an alleged victory in Syria. Well, this sounds like something that might show up in today's newspapers perhaps. Though, I'm talking about something else. I'm describing the misdeeds of somebody who lived a couple of years earlier. 13th century BC ancient Egypt, Pharaoh Ramses II, who lied to his people about winning the Battle of Kadesh. So what does this all mean? I believe that when we can understand history and we understand that some events have happened before, perhaps past solutions can fix today's problems. What if you encountered a problem and could immediately know how to solve it given your knowledge of history? Now that's what I believe history can provide for us as a perspective. And as amazing as that sounds, and as large a scope as that seems to cover, well, that's just a drop in the ocean. That's just one field of knowledge out of the many, many more that we have yet to discover. But let's take a break. Let's take a break from history. Let's take a break from academic subjects in general. Let's talk about something that makes us human. Something that makes us a society. Let's talk emotions. Let's talk empathy. I believe that emotions and empathy are to an extent knowledge. Because it is only through our own exposure and our own experience that we are able to truly understand somebody else and by extension empathize with somebody else. Think about it. If somebody came up to you one day and told you he was experiencing anxiety, how would you be able to help him if you had no experience and no exposure to how it felt like to be put in that state? He could tell you how it felt like. He could tell you how it felt like to live with anxiety on a daily basis. But words are just words. Do you really think you'd understand him? Would you really know how he felt? This is where knowledge blindness comes in. I believe that only through your own exposure and your own experience are you able to relate to somebody else, understand them, and then empathize. If somebody came up to me and told me, and, uh, told me that they were tasked with um, caring for somebody with dementia, I'd honestly be of no use. Mainly because I had never been put in that kind of situation. I have never garnered enough knowledge, enough exposure, to really understand how to act in that, scenario, in, in that scenario. But let's say I had. Let's say I spent years helping out senior citizens who uh, were suffering from dementia. Well then, I'd be able to help because I have the exposure and the experience necessary to help them out. But words, um, with that being said, I've talked about history. And I've talked about empathy. Now what? Let me bring you back to that statement I made at the start of this talk. How you're going to learn absolutely nothing, and yet somehow want to learn everything. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not an expert of anything at all. 
In fact, I'm far from it. I'm just a 17-year-old boy. But I hope that with whatever little I've been able to share with you all today, I've been able to pique your interest and that you'll join me on this journey that I propose. Now, this isn't some spiritual awakening. This isn't some speech for the sake of trying to sound smart in front of people. This is a celebration. This is a celebration of curiosity. The hunger to learn more and the hunger to keep on learning. I guess after all this, my main message is to always be receptive to new knowledge, to be open to new exposure and to new experiences. Go ahead, talk to people from all walks of life. Get to know how they feel. Get to know how they think. Pick up that book about something you know absolutely nothing about. Or go watch that YouTube video about a topic you've never come across before. This is how we develop our lens, and this is how we can finally cure knowledge blindness. But with that being said, I'd like to end with one final question. Given all we've experienced, and given all we know up to this very moment in time, how blind are we? As you think about that, it's been a pleasure. Thank you.